today's video will be a little different. I have some oriental lilies here in the vase, and I want to show you what all you can learn just by carefully observing them. Before we get to the flowers, which are obviously the reason you would buy cut lilies like that, let's take a moment and look at the leaves. The leaves are elongated and lanceolate in shape. The leaf venation is very obvious in these lily leaves, and the veins are all parallel. If you watch my videos, you might remember I talked about parallel veins as one of the characters of monocots. To give you a refresher, flowering plants are divided into monocotyledons and dicotyledons, signaling the number of cotyledons, or embryonic leaves, in its seed. If you want to learn about all the characters of monocots and dicots, I will link the video to the description below. Relying only on one character, though, is not such a good idea, as there might be exceptions. However, when moving on to the flower, we can confirm the lily is a monocot by checking another sign. The flower parts come in threes. Three sepals, three petals, six stamens, and a three-parted stigma, signaling three carpels. But wait, when you look at the lily flower, you don't really see any sepals, right? We only see six petals, all similar in size and color. In the majority of flowers, sepals and petals can be easily distinguished. Sepals are the outermost whorl of a flower, and they're often scale-like, green, and inconspicuous, and serve mainly as protection for the flower while in bud. Whereas petals are usually colorful and bold, serving to attract pollinators. But when we inspect the arrangement of these petals, or if we just gently pull the petals inward one by one, we find out there are two whorls, or layers, of three outer and three inner petals. The outer three petals are in fact sepals, and the inner three are the true petals. In this case, where it's difficult to tell sepals and petals apart, we might use the term tepals. So you can say the lily flower has three sepals and three petals, or six tepals. But there is something really cool happening between sepals and petals. When we look at individual petals and sepals, they all have a midrib, this greenish line running down the middle. Notice that the midrib in petals is maybe a bit more prominent than the midrib in sepals, plus it has these grooves on each side of the midrib. Those grooves serve for the edges of sepals to tuck in, cover and hold petals in place, and protect them during their development. It's like a locking mechanism. So when we look at the flower bud, we see six midribs. But while the sepals are visible in their entirety, we can see only the midribs from petals. So they're inside, hugged by the sepals and fully protected. Once the flower starts to open up, the sepals come out of these ridges, separating from the petals, until all of the parts are free. I learned about this mechanism from a paper I'll link down below. I highly recommend reading it if you want to get into the nitty-gritty of lily flower opening. This particular lily, which is the oriental lily, has highly decorative tepals in multiple color shades, differently colored spots that look like freckles, and it even has these raised bumps. We call these projections papillae, and just like the color and patterns, they help to attract pollinators. You might also notice that since they create this bumpy surface, pollen tends to stick to them, which in my guess might increase the chances that the visiting pollinators will get the pollen on their bodies, thus raising the chance of successful pollination. The pollen comes from anthers, which are quite large here, and if we compare this flower that just opened with the flower that's been open for a while, we see the anthers look quite different. That's because in the freshly opened flower, the anthers are yet to release their pollen. When the pollen grains inside mature, the anthers split open, or actually turn inside out, revealing the orange or rusty pollen. The pollen's color is given by the presence of carotenoids, the orange pigments, and you better be careful, because this pollen stains a lot. It can stain your fingers, clothing, or the furniture, and it's not easy to clean. For that reason, Many florists snip the anthers immediately after the flowers open to avoid the orange mass. And if you have any tips on how to clean the pollen, 
Share them with us in the comments below. For successful pollination, compatible pollen needs to land on a stigma, stick to it and eventually germinate. Some stigmas look like they have a water droplet sitting on them, or they have this glossy coating. This is stigmatic fluid, and it aids the pollination process. It's sticky, so the pollen grains easily attach to it, but it also contains proteins that help the pollen grain germinate. The surface of the stigma is not smooth. It has many little projections, also called papillae, although it's not that easy to see with the naked eye. But what you can clearly see is that the stigma is free-lobed, which, as I previously mentioned, matches with the number of carpals. So going down the style, we arrive at the ovary. The ovary is especially noticeable once the stamens and tepals fall off, as you can see here. When we cut the ovary open and look at it in the cross-section, we see there are three carpals fused together. So if the fertilization is successful and the ovary will develop into a fruit, it will be a free chambered capsule. If you are curious about the process of flower fertilization, check out my video on pollination and double fertilization, where I explain it all in detail. One more noticeable feature I have to mention is the strong smell these lilies have. Floral scent is a great guide for pollinators, and it serves as a cue, similarly to the color or shape of the petals. And as you might know, the pollinators don't visit flowers only for pollen, but mainly to feed on sugary nectar, which the flowers provide them with. You might see nectar droplets at the base of the petals in lily flowers. What do you think? Will you now look more closely when you see lily flowers? Is there any feature I forgot to mention? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to have a chance to give me your input or ask questions about the video I'm working on for the next time, consider becoming a Nature Clearly patron. With that, I want to thank to my existing patrons for supporting my work. Thank you to all of you for watching, and I'll see you next time.